Hello, welcome to Falcon Blues TV and um, what a guest I've got. You know, we've had a great night tonight in the Kirby Sports Bar. It's been fun. It's been brilliant. To, and I'm here with Tony Cotty. <laughs> you know, what more What more could I ask for for an evening? Tony, thank you so much for joining me tonight. Yeah, absolutely brilliant. Um, just going to cover the weekend, really. You know, mm -hmm. we, we've got West Ham coming up on Sunday. Uh, obviously, your your ex club, both ex clubs, really. Yep. Um, what are your expectations for the weekend? Because I suppose if the the results go either way, it's it's bittersweet for you, and you're, you're happy one way or another, I suppose. Well, I think. Listen, anyone who's watching this, I think they'll know that I'm a West Ham fan. I think everyone sort of never hidden it and never made it a secret. I want to edit so. this out and say that Tony's an Everton fan. Yeah, yeah. You know, listen, Tonians, but yeah, Everton's yeah, my course. second club. Always will be my second club, and uh, you know, I had six and a bit fantastic years at the club. So you know, I've got a huge amount of affection for the club. Um, but West Ham's my team, so it's it's difficult for me. I'm coming up to the game, obviously up on Merseyside now, and yep. um, I'm looking forward to it. I think it's going to be an exciting game. I think they're close now. Yeah. Last time we spoke was <coughs> February 29, uh, 2020, so last February, just yeah. prior to lockdown yeah. when we were in the Windsor. Yeah, it's been a tough couple of years. It has, it really has. And there's been a lot of changes within the, within Everton and also within within West Ham, I suppose, as well, you know, with, with the change of you know, yeah. senior personnel and stuff like that. Um, but we'll look, we'll look at Everton in a way, because obviously we were talking about Ancelotti last time and the results were great, but not brilliant and how we wanted it, especially early on because of how we took over in, um, we took over around about December time and then when we took in the February, the results were good but not great and then, you know, obviously lockdown happened and we were just trying to just pick up the pieces of, of that and then we came into the new season, we started well, Everton were on a roll um, and then we came all the way back, round the way through to May and Carlos left the club and we've ended up with a new manager. So. Yeah. As we were talking about before, with Benitez coming in, I I'm, I'm like you as we as we heard in, in the chat before. I still can't I can't get over this. Yeah, it's, it's a strange appointment, I think, isn't it? But you know, as I said to all the guys out there, you know, we, we just had a great Q and I, and you know, he'll be judged on his results. Yeah. And you know, if he can win that elusive trophy for Everton, then I, I think we're all going. Do you know what? Fair play to him because it was. Must have been a tough decision for him as well. You know, we all know he's a, you know, what he did for Liverpool, what he's done for Liverpool Football Club, and you know, coming across the divide and, and signing on as manager for Everton, it can't have been easy for for him. You know, it must have been a big, big decision. But he obviously believes in himself. He obviously yes. thinks he can maybe get Everton to win that trophy. And if he does, I, you know, it's an, it, it, it wouldn't have been my choice as manager. I've said that publicly, and I'll say it again to you tonight. Yeah. But if and it's a big if. If he can win trophies for Everton, then I think you know everyone will go on fair play. You know it was a it was a it was a big risk he took, but he's paid off. And yeah. uh, as Evertonians will be, you know, they'll be well pleased. He's been a long time, hasn't it, since they won a trophy? Of course, I think I think <coughs> the the only way I keep looking at it is like you've got to have some balls to take on the Everton job in general, and to yeah, come across course. from the other side. Yeah, it puts even said. more pressure on, doesn't it? You know, I know it just it's almost unheard of, isn't it, in modern times for a you know a manager to go from Liverpool to Everton or vice versa, you know, it is unheard of. So it's a, you know, it's a big decision. It's a big decision for the board and for the club, and it's a big decision for Benitez. And I, it's like, I really hope it pays off. I really hope it does because otherwise, you know, if things, the form starts dipping and the club starts losing games, then obviously the fans are going to be moaning. And, you know, he's a Liverpool yeah. fan and all that sort of stuff. And you know, we don't want that. We want Everton to be successful. I yeah. want that. You want that. And we, we want the club to to push on. So I, I, I don't know whether it will be a, an appointment for the future but certainly for, for the present you know if he carries on doing what he's done at the start of this season then I don't think the other time is it to run up it. Yeah. With I mean obviously you spoke before about Howard's resigning and then Mike Walker coming in. Mm. What what kind of feelings are you going through at the time when a new manager comes in if you're you know if your players are like from the fringe so if you're if you're suddenly thinking I'm gonna be you know all of a sudden I'm gonna be thrust into the line like I'm gonna be the manager's choice. You know, do you do you expect that? Because of, well, every, manager, every, player, every player is different, and you know, it, I don't think it really matters. Even if you're an established first team star, you've still got to prove yourself to the manager. Yeah. You know, it's you know, even if you're Richarlison or Dominic Calvert Lewin, you, you know, you you're obviously the first choice forwards, but you've still got to prove yourself. You still yeah. got to do in training, and you still got to prove that you're worthy of starting in that first team. So. 
Um, you know, it's a new challenge for all the players. I don't think any player likes to change a manager. You want to try and keep the stability of the football club. But I mean, let's be honest. You know, the the managers have been swapping around quite a lot, yeah. Everton, and they, and, you know, they really do need a, a period where they keep the same manager. And you know, hopefully, that's Benitez. Only time will tell. But. You know, as a player, it's, it's quite exciting in many respects, but it's also difficult in other respects because you've got to prove yourself to the manager. Yeah. The, the managers that are, that are playing on Sunday are doing a complete role reversal. You know, both teams are now, yeah. you know, from the home and the away dugout, so just complete swap and all that. What do you expect now from, from what, probably from what you've seen with West Ham to, uh, and what you've, you've, you've seen so far with Everton? What do you expect on Sunday? I expect a tight game. I think it'll be a good game. Um, I've seen a lot of West Ham this year. Obviously, my team, but, you know, they're a dangerous team. They've got some good players. Um, Antonio's been fabulous. Declan Rice has been good for me. Jared Bowen, Ben Rama. They've got some really, really good players. And if Everton are slightly off their game, then they will get beat. I can promise you that because West Ham have got good players. Um, you know, having said all that, I, I, you know, as I said, I, albeit I'm looking from a distance. It's been a good start for me, so, you know, without their two established front, front uh, first choice um, strikers. So uh, hopefully those guys will be back involved in the squad at the weekend. You know, Everton need those two back, and then I think if you get them two back in the team, then you know, you're yeah. looking at a really good season for the club. Now, what is a good season for Everton? A good season getting into Europe, and that's yeah. the target. And I think that's the target for many years, whether that's Europa League or Champions League. We'll have to wait and see, but the target is to get in Europe or win, win the trophy for the club. I think he does that in one of the good season. Yeah. So David Moyes was in charge for the end of ten years. Do you see similar shades of that Everton side and that that kind of? The way the way he set up Everton in, in the West Ham side now, and how you know how that can build to play against Everton. I'd like to think so. Yeah, I mean, listen, I, I'm a huge David Moyes fan. I like him as a person. I, I like what he's achieved as a coach. And let's be honest, what he did for Everton was fantastic. You know, to get into Champions League football, that's what West Ham was trying to do. Yeah. So if, you know, if you can get anywhere near that, that was close last year. It was only two points away. Qualify for the Europa League, so it's a, it's a new experience for the club, and yeah. you know a lot more games, obviously as a result of that. But if Moyes can get West Ham in the Champions League and do what he did at Everton, you know, look, I mean West Ham fans love him anyway, so yeah. they love him even more if he can do that. But um, he's a good manager, and you know West Ham are lucky they've got him. Yeah, I think with Everton with, with Moyes, I think it was it almost it always felt like that step too far. With Everton, like you would always seem to lack. That striker, yep. that's when he goes the season striker that will push us on into the Europa League, into the Champions yep. League. Do you do you think the West Ham can push on with that in, in the January transfer window, or is it I, I think, need to be I think it's going to be difficult. I think for for both Everton and West Ham, it, it's difficult because you've got the so-called top four. We've just got a takeover game on at Newcastle. It gives them a lot of money. That's without mentioning Arsenal and Spurs, and then you've got good clubs like Leicester, Wolves, yeah. Aston Villa. You know they've all got a little bit of money, and they're all trying to achieve what Everton and West Ham are trying to do, which is to get in the top six. So yeah. it makes it really, really difficult. It makes it it's a fascinating season in terms of the Premier League, but for for Everton and West Ham, that you know the challenge is is to get into Europe coming into the, the season. So I would say that West Ham and, and Everton. Everton are 26 years since they won a trophy. West Ham are 41 years since they won a trophy. Both teams trying to get in Europe, so they're, they're on very, very similar paths at yeah. the moment, and they're, they're just trying to progress and get their club to push forward. Yeah, I think those kinds of like those, those figures are going to get grinded in the, the, the further and further we go. Obviously, 41 for West Ham, yeah. 26, nearly 27 for Everton. With the way West Ham, Tottenham, oh, sorry, sorry, Leicester and West Ham. We'll see. I've had a few. Leave me alone. <laughs> With the way you know Leicester and Arsenal and Tottenham have played recently, you know they're not picking up the results that they should. No. Yeah. So this is the perfect opportunity for both West Ham and Everton to start picking up the results that they need to start kicking on. Really, of course. It's not like a, and both teams would look at it and say you're playing against one of your rivals for the European places. Yeah. So you know if you can, if you can get the three points, whether that's Everton or West Ham on Sunday, if you can get the three points. You know, you not only is it a good three points, but you're also beating one of your potential rivals exactly. for the European places. Yeah. So it's a big, big game, and you know, I'm looking forward to it. I think, as I said, I think it'll be an exciting game. 
a sat the fence out there, didn't I? I said it's yeah, going to be a one all yeah, draw, but yeah. what else would you expect me to say? I'm not going to say Everton are going to win 4-0 and beat my old team, but it's you know, 4-0. No, I don't want to say that. But, um, and what I do know is, is you know, West Ham historically, it's good as it's not a good round. Really, so yeah. um, I think it probably favours Everton at the weekend, but I think West Ham will come and give it a little count yes. I've said given our results against Man United. I said Man United was going to be our biggest test, and that didn't happen. So I am now pushing this back to West Ham because of the Moyes factor yep. in this side. So I'm expecting, I'm, I'm expecting West Ham to be able to turn up and give us a, give us our toughest game of the season. I think it might be right. Yeah, I mean it was a good result, wasn't it? Yeah. You know, to go to Old Trafford at any season and get a draw is a good result. So um, yeah, I think. You know, if Everton will beat West Ham, then you know, we look here. And they, you know, they're fifth at the moment, aren't they? And if you, if you win, it might push Everton into the top four. Who knows? And you know, it's, it's, it's all about getting confidence and getting the, the bandwagon going. And if Everton can get on a, a run of form, winning games, you know, or, or not certainly not losing games, and then you get your front two back, yeah, they're not going to be far away from the end of the season. Okay, so finally, so if you wrap up, then Tony, give me a prediction for the weekend. I've already said one, 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 one. He's sitting on the fence. He's <laughs> sitting on the fence. What do you expect? No, <laughs> I, I had to chat with uh, one of your guys, uh, young lad, uh, Jake. Nice one for uh, having the interview with us the other day. And it, I said 3 2. I said the high scoring game is going to be a bit of a battle. I think it's going to be a good battle. I think it's going to be. It'll be a good game. Yeah, I'm really looking forward to it. So I'm going to go 3 2 ever. Okay. So. So I'm going to wrap it up with that. So Tony, thank you so much for tonight. Thank you for having me. Welcome to our big chat with us now. To Led, up to Sophie's, Colin Chong, Tony Cotty. See you in a bit.